Melby, I don't think this is a good sign. Yeah, Yara, it doesn't look good at all. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video of our channel. My name is Yara, and this is my sister Malvi. And today, we're going to be talking about something that really hits us. It's something that not only do we have to make sure that we deal with it, like the Varroa, but it's also another problem that us beekeepers in, in our area are prone to, and that is Nozema. However, before we get going, we will invite you to smash that subscribe button and click the little bell so then you'll be notified every single time we upload. And also, stay tuned for the end of this video for a special announcement. Today is Thursday, April 16th, and last year we once again winterized our three colonies, and they survived this year once again. But I think without this problem, they would be in better condition. Since October, these hives have been in hibernation and they weren't flying or doing anything of that sort. By that time, we were already feeding them some sugar syrup and some pollen patties um, because as you can clearly see, we have no flower sources still. So you can imagine how long our winters are. They're more than five months. Our bees are stuck in their hives during this time. So this tells you why Nozima is a serious problem in areas with climates where our bees are confined in their hives for a very long time. However, because our bees know that spring is coming, we have had a lot of activity in the past few weeks. And even though bees are such amazing creatures, they have to poop. And they do that by flying outside. But sometimes when it's really cold, they're forced to do it inside, as you can see in this video right here. And because of all this, I decided to go down to our bookshelf and do some more research on Nozema. What did you find? Well, for those who don't know, nosimosis or nosema disease is caused by specifically two species of parasites that are spore-forming funguses. One is called nosema apis and the other is nosema serenae. And even though they are two different types, it's actually really difficult to distinguish both of them because they look almost identical to each other. Now, it has been said that Nozema apis originated in European honeybees and Nozema serenae evolved as a pest in Asian honeybees. Nozema serenae is also known to be more damaging than Nozema apis because it affects more cells in the bee's midgut. It can kill infected bees faster. This type of nozema is what our bees are prone to in our area. Yara, I heard that this is considered an adult bee disease, but does that mean that younger bees can get it too? Good question. Both adult bees and younger bees can get this disease. If younger bees are infected, they will have difficulty digesting food for the rest of their life. Infected adult bees will have a shortened lifespan, and this applies to younger bees as well. Well, Yara, how does this all start then? How does Nozema infect a bee and later a colony? Well, the problem begins when a bee ingests the Nozema spores, which grow inside the midgut of the bee. The fungus enters the cells of the midgut and begins to absorb all the vital nutrients. It has a huge effect in the digestive system, especially when the bee poops and another bee comes and cleans up the waste. The spores contaminate whatever it touches, from another bee who is cleaning, to the combs, and even to the food they eat, because the spores were in contact with the bee's mandibles, which they used to clean. So is Nozema very contagious? Yes, it is very contagious, especially to beekeepers and bees who are prone to long, cold winters like ourselves. Now, because of that, we have been researching ways in order to keep our bees 100% natural, but also deal with this problem of Nozema. However, it is almost impossible to deal with both of these things and keep them 100% natural at the same time. And since we have a more than five months long winter, we have to do two treatments for any diseases in the fall and when we're exiting winter. So it's either treat them or open up a dead hive after the winter is over. We have had so many friends come to us and tell us, oh, I lost all my hives, uh, my bees didn't make it, etc. And yes, Nozema, mites, and the long winters all contribute to these losses. There are many places trying to help us beekeepers for such beekeeping crisis. And some have labs that can take samples to help you identify the possible diseases or infestations that your hive may have. These places can be found in the US, Germany, France, 
and many other countries. Never be scared to reach out and take samples of bees if you aren't sure like Malvi did a week ago. You have to make sure that the bees you take are from the entrance because that's where there will be foragers. Therefore, it will give more accuracy when those bees are run through the tests. Now, one of the things that we use in order to prevent the Nozema infestation is we treat our bees with Flumagillin B. We know that in many places it is not commonly used or applied in the hives, but we use it and we treat our bees with it. However, this isn't the only option that you have. There are many different tactics that you can do in order to prevent Nozema, such as Change 30% of your frames from your brood boxes every year. Clean your hives every year, especially the bottom. We like to do this at the end of the summer where the weather is nice so we can do an excellent cleaning job. And one last option that you have is to treat with chemicals such as Flumagillin B like Malvi said or even this Croatian treatment called Nozovic. Either way, there are many different treatments that you can use for your bees. And if you aren't sure, there are many different sources to look for information and what you can do in order to help your bees. Well guys, this concludes our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned something new about Nozema. And also, we just launched these new shirts, Beekeeper Practicing Social Distancing for Years. They are limited edition. So if you're interested in getting your own, they are $30 Canadian, contact us through our social media, Gmail, beesarefunny at gmail.com or Instagram, beesarefunny. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Share this video with your friends and family. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding any beekeeping topic or Nozema. Follow us on all our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. And finally, smash the subscribe button, click the bell, and then you'll be notified every single time we upload. My name is Yara. And my name is Malvi. And you're watching Bees Are Funny. Till next time.